Here we derive the path integral for a single particle, and we go straight to the point. We consider operators of the kind p hat and q hat, and of course they represent momentum and position. So p is momentum and q is position. And then we consider the classical Hamiltonian h of qp, which is uh, given by p squared over 2m plus the potential energy, which depends only on q. And this classical Hamiltonian corresponds to a quantum mechanical operator of the kind h hat, which is a function. So it is uh, actually the Hamiltonian itself, but treated as a function of the operators q hat and p hat. Now, q and p, q hat and p hat, these operators satisfy, of course, the commutation relation, q hat, p hat, commutation relation, which is equal to i, and we set h bar equal to 1 for the sake of uh, convenience, and uh, therefore this is equal to i times the identity operator that I can uh, represent like this, with this 1, like this, or sometimes I can just write 1, but this should be treated as an operator, the identity operator. Right? Now, the Schrodinger equation, of course, is uh, I, the derivative with respect to time, partial derivative with respect to time, of a state psi, and this is equal to the Hamiltonian acting on the state psi. And this determines the evolution of states, the time evolution of states. And this Schrodinger equation has a formal solution, which is of the following kind. So psi is a state, and of course it depends on time because it, evol it evolves in time. And this is equal to the exponential e to the minus i Hamiltonian operator t. And then here we have psi at time t equal to zero. The Hamiltonian is time independent, so this is why we can write it in this form. And the exponential written with this operator here should be interpreted in the following manner. So it should be interpreted as, as an infinite series from zero to infinity of minus i h hat t to the power n divided by n factorial. So this is how we should interpret these operators. There are different powers of this operator here, the Hamiltonian. Now, we can also consider position states, which uh, satisfy the following uh, relation. So if we apply q hat, which uh, should be treated as a function of time, if we apply this to q and t, so here we use the bracket notation, this is a cat vector, this is equal to q, which is a scalar in this case, qt, because this state here, this dynamical state, which depends on time and also the position q, is an eigenstate for the position q. So this is the eigenvalue for the position of operator, because in this case, this state is associated with the, this position here, q. So q is any real number. We use the convenient normalization of the following kind. So if we have states of this kind, in bracket notation, q prime t, and we take this inner product with qt, this is equal to delta, the, the, in this case this is the um, Dirac delta of q prime minus q. So these are normalized states. Because if we integrate these states over q or over q prime, we get 1. And of course, if q is not equal to q prime, you can see that uh, we get uh, the inner product equal to zero because the, this the Dirac delta would be zero and therefore this, is, this means that these states are orthogonal. We can also consider states like this, q, where in this case the states are time independent and they form a basis for any state. And we can define the so-called wave function, psi, which depends on q and t, and this is given by the following bracket notation like this q, the bra q, and then we have the cat psi of t, like this. So 
these states here are considered to be time independent and we define this function psi of q and t which still satisfies the Schrodinger equation. In particular, when we act with the Hamiltonian on uh, the wave function psi of q and t, the Hamiltonian will uh, result in the following quantity, minus 1 over 2m d squared divided by dq squared plus v of q, potential energy, right? So basically we get uh, the following uh, equation. So we have h applied to psi, which is a uh, that the wave function there and it is equal to this applied to psi right and this will also have to be equal to i derivative with respect to time of psi according to the schrodinger equation now the path integral approach expresses time evolution of states in terms of possible trajectories of particles first we write the wave function like this so psi of qt can be written of course as in the following so we have the bra q then we have the exponential e to the minus i h hat t which is applied to psi of zero in this case we have to put zero the time t equal to zero because the evolution is given by the complex exponential there which is actually an operator because it contains the hamiltonian now we introduce a so-called complete set of states q0 and by complete it means that if we take the integral the integral over q0 and then here we have q0 cat and then we have q0 bra like this this will be a matrix if you think about it and Actually, you can think of this as an operator. So the result would have to be an operator, and this will be the identity operator, one. And if we use this uh, kind of formalism, we can rewrite the um, wave function psi of qt as integral d q0. Then we have q, we have e to the minus i h hat t q0 then we have q0 psi of 0 like this so i've simply used this uh, completeness relation this is also called a completeness relation i have introduced it there and now we can define it to be integral dq0 k which is the kernel and i will say something more about it which depends on q q0 and time and then we have psi of q0 zero, 0 of course this psi of q0 zero, 0 is simply this this is psi of q0 zero, 0 and then this will be exactly what i defined as the kernel so i have defined k of q q0 t as q and then here we have the, uh, we have the exponential e to the minus i h hat t q0 like this and now we consider the evolution of the wave function over a time interval and in particular the time interval goes from zero to capital T, so the variable T of time belongs to this interval here, and we divide this interval up into smaller chunks, so smaller intervals of the of the following size. So, for example, here we have the interval zero T, and we divide it into smaller chunks, which in principle might have different lengths, but it is convenient to think of them as having the same length delta T later but for now i'm not uh, assuming that they necessarily need to have the same length so here for example we have zero which coincides with t0 then we have t1 we have t2 we have t3 
and so on, all the way up to the last point of the interval, which uh, will be equal to t sub n plus 1, for example, right? So this will be tk and so on. Now, we can rewrite the complex exponential e to the minus i h hat t as a product like this e to the minus i h hat we have t n plus 1 minus tn and then we have e to the minus i h hat tn minus tn minus 1 dot 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 and then we have e to the minus i h hat t1 in this last exponential in principle we would have t1 minus t0 but of course t0 is equal to 0 so this is just uh, e to the minus i h hat t1 now at each tk or tr whatever you want to call it where r can be either 1, 2, dot, 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 n, we introduce complete sets of states so that we can rewrite the kernel of q, q0, t, in the following form. So we integrate over a product, and I will show you why we have this product, from r equal to 1 to lowercase n, we integrate these um, dqr differentials. We have qr plus 1. And then we have e to the minus i h hat dr plus 1 minus dr. qr like this. And then finally, outside of uh, this product, we also have q1 e to the minus i h hat t1 and finally we have q0 like this so you can see that when we take all these products if you write them down for example set r equal to 1 so for the first product you have dq1 then you have uh, this um, bra i mean this bra will be q2 you will have uh, this operator and then you will have q1 from here but you also have q1 here so when you integrate over dq1 actually this will give rise to the identity operator so you can uh, perpetuate this kind of reasoning you can extend it for a dq2 dq3 and so on and you simply realize that we have introduced some identity operators, and that is, of course, something that we can do. So this is perfectly legitimate because the expression is still coincident with the one that we started from, considering that this can be rewritten like this. We have simply split this product, considering the single intervals that we have from here. We have a split this operator as a product of operators over the intervals there. Simple as that. In here, for example, we have considered q n plus 1, where n here is just this n here. This is equal to simply q. You can take this as a definition. So you, at the end of the day, you still have to get the expression here. So this q comes from... Uh, q sub n plus 1. Simple as that. That means that the integration goes over all possible values of q at t1, t2, dot dot dot, tn, as the value of q evolves from q0 at t equal to 0 to q at t equal to capital T. Up to now, the calculation has only been uh, complicated uh, and there is no straightforward way for an explicit solution of the problem for an arbitrary potential V of Q. We will approximate the factors of this kind, QR plus 1, e to the minus i h hat delta t, 
where this delta t here is simply this interval, and we will assume that these intervals will be very small at some point. And here we have, of course, qr. So delta t will be, in general, tr plus 1 minus tr. And um, we will consider them to be small. But first, consider a case where these expressions can be evaluated explicitly. And this is the free theory with the potential v equal to 0. So at first, let's consider the case where v is equal to 0, which is a, a simple case. In fact, for uh, this specific case, if you consider the expression for the kernel, this one, of course, this operator h hat will simply be e to the minus i p hat squared divided by 2m t, right? And it is valid for any value of t. Now, we can use a complete set of states, but in momentum space. So integral dp divided by 2 pi, and we have p, p like this. This will be equal to the identity operator. So we use this complete set of states so that we can, uh, of course, write the kernel. Let me go below here. We can write k. 0, so we put a 0 here, a 0 subscript to denote the fact that uh, at the end of the day, here we are considering the free theory with uh, the potential v equal to 0. This depends on, on q, q prime, and uh, t. And this is equal to integral dp over 2 pi. We have q, we still have the exponential e to the minus i p squared p hat squared over 2m t, because we are in the free theory in this case, and then we have p, we have p like this, and finally we have q prime like this. But now we can show that p q prime is equal to e to the minus i p q prime, or if you want, we can also write this as q prime p equal to e to the plus i p q prime, right? Because uh, after all, this is simply the complex conjugate of uh, this state here. This, uh, this is a number because it's an inner product between uh, states. Now, we can show this because, uh, for example, we can uh, consider the, the second one and we can act with uh, the momentum operator p, q prime, P, which we can write as Q prime momentum operator acting on states with definite momentum. So in this case, this will give me just a momentum P state P, right? Because this will be an eigenstate of this operator. So we can also write this as P Q prime P like this, but this is also equal to minus i derivative with respect to q prime because we have the momentum operator and here since we have q prime we can replace the momentum operator with minus i d over dq prime and then here we have q prime p so we have we have obtained the differential equation of the following kind minus i d over dq prime q prime p and then this is equal to p q prime p like this this is a very simple differential equation which tells us that this inner product must be proportional to e to the i p q prime. So when you take the derivative of this complex exponential with respect to q prime, you will have a factor of i p in front of the exponential. Of course, this is multiplied by minus i, so this will give me p. And of course, it is equal to p times this inner product. So we have showed that uh, indeed uh, we can consider these relations that we will use in the integral above. And therefore, we can rewrite this integral like this. So since we here here we have this uh, p hat operator and uh, on its right, 
we have the state p. So this integral basically will become integral dp over 2 pi e to the minus i p squared over 2m g, right? And then we are left with, the, of course, qp, and then we have uh, p q prime like this, but now we, we have uh, just shown that uh, we can write this as e to the i pq, and this will be e to the minus i p q prime. So basically, this integral here can be rewritten as integral dp over 2 pi e to the minus i p squared over 2m t e to the i p q minus q prime, like this. Now we can uh, make a substitution, a simple substitution of the following kind, p prime equal to p minus m q minus q prime divided by t. This substitution will allow me to get rid of uh, such a term, which is uh, linear in p. I mean, the argument of the exponential is linear in p, and with this substitution I can show you that we can get rid of this term. So when you consider the substitution, this will give rise to e to the i m q minus q prime squared divided by 2t, and then we have integral d p prime over 2 pi e to the minus i p prime squared divided by 2 m t, which is some kind of uh, Gaussian integral, and uh, one of course should be careful and pay attention to the fact that actually here we have the square root of minus 1, so the imaginary number. So this is not an appropriate Gaussian integral, but according to complex calculus, it is possible to show that you can actually evaluate it as a simple Gaussian integral by putting, by considering i, this i here, as a simple number, just like a real number. It is not a, a real number because this is a complex number, but you can do it. And you can evaluate this to be, so we, we still have the same factor, e to the i m, q minus q prime squared divided by 2t, and then you can evaluate that as a Gaussian integral, square root of m divided by 2 pi i t. So in general, when you have a Gaussian integral, of course, you integrate over r, so from minus infinity to plus infinity, you have something like this. You have dx, and then you have e to the minus x squared over 2, Sigma, sigma squared, where sigma squared is the variance of uh, this Gaussian distribution, so this is a Gaussian probability density, and the result is the square root of 2 pi sigma squared inside the square root, or if you want, square root of 2 pi sigma. So if you use this result and you treat i as a simple real number, what you get is exactly this. And this can be made uh, more rigorous by considering complex calculus and contour integration, but uh, I'm not going to do it uh, here. Now, when we let t go to zero, the kernel, which is exactly this, will tend to the Dirac delta. In particular, this will tend to the Dirac delta of q minus q prime, for example, when t goes to zero. And this is good, actually. Because if you remember some relations that you wrote, here for the kernel, this expression here in particular, if the kernel goes to the Dirac delta of q minus q0 in this case, of course, psi of qt will have to be equal to psi of q0, 0, right? So it means that the state psi of qt will have to be equal to this as t goes to zero, because remember that t is going to zero, so it makes sense that when t goes to zero, of course, this will have to be coincident with uh, the function psi of q0, zero, zero, where q is equal to q0 as well, because we have the Dirac delta there, so it uh, makes sense if you think about it. Anyway, now let us return to the integral expression that we considered 
for the kernel, the very general expression here. And now we will, uh, in due course, take the limit as uh, n goes to infinity. So this n here will have to go to infinity. And th this will mean that uh, these uh, intervals here will have to be smaller and smaller. And the length of the integrals are, are smaller and smaller. And therefore, what we called previously delta t will have to go to zero. So the distance between the points in uh, the, the interval. We are concerned with uh, finding an approximation for the following exponential. So e to the minus i h hat delta t. So this operator appears because all these differences will go to delta t. So this will go to delta t. This will also go to delta t like this. And one thing that is important to notice is that, is that uh, if we have uh, operators in general, so for example, let's consider an operator a hat and an operator b hat. In general, if we take the sum of them and we exponentiate them like this, and this should be interpreted as an infinite series, where we have powers of these operators, in general, this is not equal to e to the a hat, e to the b hat. So this is not true, because they are operators, and it is possible to find formulas, more, more general formulas, where uh, we can write an equality there, but not like this. So in particular, we have something like this. So if I go back, this is equal to e to the a, e to the b, but we also have e to the minus one half commutator between a and b. And this equality holds if the commutator is a number. So this belongs to, in general, it can be a complex number, okay? It is possible to show it. For example, I showed it in my course on, on QFT, but never mind. So we are not going to use this formula here. We, we do not need that. And in this case, we are actually focused on the following. So in particular, if we consider the limit, as n goes to infinity of the following. So we have e to the a hat divided by n, e to the b hat divided by n, and then we raise it to the power n. And we can show actually that in this case, this will be equal to e to the a hat plus b hat, like this. So in this case, since n is very large, we can expand it and we can truncate the series. For example, like this, this is the identity operator plus a hat over n approximately. And we can do something similar here. So at the end of the day, we have to evaluate one plus a hat plus b hat over n. And then we have higher order terms. So something like O of one over n squared. And we have to set, we have to raise it to the power n, and we have to take the limit as n goes to infinity. But when n goes to infinity, this is a highly negligible. And this is something that we can recognize. This is just the exponential of a hat plus b hat. So indeed, what we wrote here is true. And this means, this means in general that. Why, I mean, why do we need this formula? Why do we need it? It's true that we have products of operators in here, but e to the minus i h hat delta t, of course, commutes if we have e to the minus i h hat delta t, because this operator commutes with this one. So also they, I mean, these two operators commute with each other, the, the two exponentials. So this of course can be written as e to the minus i two h hat delta t without any problem. But, but if you split the Hamiltonian into the two parts, so we have a kinetic part and the potential part, those parts 
only commute indeed if this delta t goes to zero right so basically we can write e to the minus i p hat square over 2m delta t e to the minus i v of q hat delta t so this is something that we can do only if delta t here goes to zero because otherwise we could not do that so basically what this result tells us is that uh, here we can write this exponential as a factor of two exponentials like this where we have the potential energy operator on one side and then on, on the left here we have the kinetic energy but uh, this is actually the operator associated with the kinetic energy okay so basically we can write qr plus one e to the minus i h hat delta t qr this is equal to qr plus one e to the minus i p hat squared over 2m delta t and then we have e to the minus i v of q hat delta t q r like this because the states q r are eigenstates of the operator q so they are eigenstates of this operator here the second exponential this one can actually be factored out of uh, such an inner product because when we act with this on QR, we can simply replace this uh, Q operator with uh, QR and then since this is a number now, we can factor it out. And therefore, we can uh, write this as E to the minus V of QR delta t and then we have qr plus 1 e to the minus i p hat squared over 2m delta t qr but now we have evaluated this inner product because this is the inner product where uh, v is equal to zero there if you think about it we evaluated it because uh, we did it in here it is something like that in here. We have introduced this uh, complete set of states P. We have integrated over them, and therefore we can write this uh, result as the square root of m divided by 2 pi i delta t e to the i one half m qr plus 1 minus qr over delta t squared delta t minus i v of qr delta t like this. Finally, if we write the expression of uh, k, q, q0, and t, we can write it as m divided by 2 pi i delta t raised to the power 1 half times n plus 1, like this. And then we integrate over this product over r from 1 to n. We have dqr. Then outside of the product, we have e to the i summation. So here we have a sum over r from 0 to n 1 half m qr plus 1 minus qr divided by delta t and then we have to square it minus v of qr and outside of it we have delta t delta t like this where we have considered that, of course, qn plus 1 is equal to q. 
And now the path integral is obtained by considering the limit as n goes to infinity and delta t goes to zero. So first, in this exponent here, this quantity will give rise to the action, which is dependent on the function q. So we, we write this dependence with these square brackets to denote that q is actually a function. So this is a functional. And s of q in the limit will be the integral from 0 to capital T dt 1 half m q dot squared minus v of q, which is just integral from 0 to t dt. And then here we have the Lagrangian of q, q dot, like this. So L is just simply the classical Lagrangian, and the notation, as I said, S of q written like this, denotes a dependence on a function. So while a function assigns a number to a number, S is a functional, because it assigns a number to a given function, q. Now, you can note that uh, q of 0 is just what we call q0, and q of capital T will be just q. And as a formal definition, we can let, so when we let uh, n go to infinity, we have the following association. Square root of m divided by 2 pi i dt, delta t, times this product, over r from 1 to n, square root of m over 2 pi i delta t dqr, this will go to some d capital D q like this, so that we can write our result in the following formal way. Q, k of q, q0 t, which can be written as q e to the minus i h hat t q0, which describes the evolution from a state uh, q0 to a state q. This is equal to integral dq e to the i s of q, like this. So this is the path integral, and the path integral is the sum over all paths between q and q0, which are weighted, all these paths are weighted by e to the i s. This represents uh, the fact that uh, the classical concept of a trajectory has no validity in quantum mechanics. For example, in the double slit experiment, it is impossible to tell which path a particle has taken that is registered on the screen. Unlike in classical physics, where there is a, usually a unique path, or at least a finite number of paths, we have to take all possible trajectories into account when dealing with quantum mechanics. This path integral formalism is an alternative approach to quantum mechanics, which in many ways is quite intuitive.